The Enhanced American Express Business Gold Card is designed to take your business further. It's packed with features and benefits like flexible spending capacity that adapts to your business, 24-7 support from a business card specialist trained to help with your business needs, and so much more. The Amex Business Gold Card, now smarter and more flexible. That's the powerful backing of American Express. Terms apply. Learn more at americanexpress.com slash businessgoldcard. Hey, what's going on, everybody? You are now tuned in to the Paging Dr. Shonda podcast, where we talk about all things related to psychology, faith, and the culture. Y'all know it's your girl. Listen, it is the month of December, Chanel. December already. But do you know what that means for the podcast? What does it mean? It's officially been a year. One year of podcasting. I love it. Like one year. Like I know people who can't do it or have to stop for certain reasons. You know, it's good to take breaks and all that stuff, but breaks are necessary. Breaks are absolutely necessary. Yeah. But I'm glad that I was able to like keep it going. Breaks and you were still consistent. Yes. Love it. Yes. I love it. And I love you guys for being there each and every time I post an episode. Whether you're watching the video or if you're listening to the audio version of the podcast, I certainly appreciate you. For this one year anniversary, um, I'm just hoping to do things bigger and better. Like we have some amazing guests lined up for 2023. I have a few of my psychology friends who are planning to join us for a few episodes and it's going to be amazing, 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 amazing. Listen, y'all, I cannot wait to get into today's episode. I have a very special guest with me. She might be new to y'all, but she's literally like my best friend <laughs> it's like a, a, having a twin is like having a born bestie it's a you, built-in bestie a built-in bestie yeah when people ask you like okay what's it like having a twin what do you say um it's like having a regular sister but it's also like having that built-in bestie but also having somebody who looks like you so i asked it's that weird i if you said it's weird right yeah i asked that because i saw somebody on tiktok oh by the way guys if you haven't noticed I've been on TikTok. Your girl's brand new there. Uh, you know, been there for, what, two months? Yeah. Y'all been showing love, so make sure you guys follow me on TikTok. I, I think like, that's my new stomping grounds, too. TikTok, we'll yeah. 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 I'm not really feeling Instagram feel like, like that. TikTok is more fun and authentic. Too. Yeah. Yeah. And People you can make see, mistakes. Yeah. Like, nobody cares. It's right. just like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Somebody had the perfect um, explanation of TikTok, and they were saying, like, oh, TikTok is the come-as-you-are version of the social media apps, whereas mm. Instagram is the, you know, you put on your Sunday best. Up. It's yeah. very aesthetic driven, yeah. whereas TikTok is not. TikTok is more so focused on like, if you have the information. Right, okay. I like that. Yeah. yeah, you can literally show up on TikTok with your bonnet on. I know people who do that. I do no, too. No shade at all, but if you spend facts, right. you're going they don't like, care. they don't care. As long as you got the facts. Yeah, so I don't know y'all, make sure y'all follow us on TikTok. But going back to my point, Hold on. Pause real quick. The twin do I got the white line? You do, a little bit. See, I can't do that. I, I don't, like, whenever somebody has a white line and they talking to me, I'm like, stare you gotta, at uh, Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna get that together. Just suggest. Is there's it more? Uh, it's a little bit more in there. Like, uh, down here. Yep. It's going. Yeah, do I have it? No. Okay. All right, perfect. So, <laughs> y'all family, so y'all can, <laughs> y'all can witness that. Um, but yeah, somebody had posted on TikTok and was like, you know how they have those posts where it's like, oh, unpopular opinions? Yeah. One of their unpopular opinions was like, adult twins, that's so weird. <laughs> what? What do you expect us to do? Stop being twins yes. after 18? Stop growing up? I guess. I don't know what they expect us to do, Chanel. That's so weird. But they're saying like twins who dress alike is like more weird. That is weird. But we as don't an dress adult, alike. We, we, we don't dress alike. Themes. Yeah, we go with themes. We got a little leather on today. Actually, I feel like... We're dope, so even if we do dress alike, it's looked at as cool. Yeah, I would say so. So, <laughs> <laughs> But go ahead and introduce yourself, Chanel. Hi, everyone. My name is Chanel S. Reynolds. I am a sports executive, speaker, author, and I'm also a podcast host. Uh, tune into the Success Playbook podcast and also our joint podcast. Yep. Which is going into my next point. <laughs> so if you guys haven't subscribed yet, I need y'all to tune into the Double Dose Podcast. The Double Dose Podcast. The Double Dose Podcast. 
Uh, so this is where myself and Chanel, yes, we join together. We join we, forces. We join forces. The dynamic about, duo. <laughs> right. The power twins. The power twins. <laughs> we do all of that together. Like it's a conglomeration of my expertise in my expertise and in, in psychology, her expertise in like sports and the uh, professional Business industry, world, success, right. leadership, all that good stuff. And we Came also together. join in faith in there. We yep. talk about faith based topics or whatever. Yeah. So I think it's a really great podcast. We have some really good feedback um so it's, it's been a dope experience just to have it and so make sure you guys subscribe to it what have been some it's of your time. favorite double dose moments double on the podcast mm -hmm. um i really enjoyed the last podcast where we talked about is grace for jeffrey dahmer because that's after we went through the entire netflix series we yeah. binge watched it yeah. and then we just kind of dissected everything that that went forth but that was one of my favorite topics Yes, that was one of mine, too. Um, so we actually went into several different topics in that one episode. We talked about Jeffrey Dahmer. Then we, we got into talking about, like, The Little Mermaid and how we never saw that movie. Oh, we did. Yeah. <laughs> we got into talking about, like, mermaids. and Like, it was a lot <laughs> that we were talking about. It was a lot. Yeah. So that was one of my favorite Double Dose moments as well. As well as the fact that, like, we can literally talk pop culture and it yeah. doesn't have to be, like, you know, it, it it's not raunchy, ratchet. Yeah, like yeah. We, we can talk what's relevant while also incorporating uh, the word of God. Right. So because that's that's ingrained in us. Yeah, like, that's it's us. not a performance for us. Right. So that's literally us, like observing what's going on in the world while also applying to the the scripture. Whatever. Right. Drawing it back to the word of God. Mm -hmm. So exactly. So I'm excited about the Double Dose podcast. I am too. We got yeah. some big things coming in 2023. Yes. So. so let me ask you, do you think being a twin at after 18 is weird? Do I think being myself after 18 <laughs> is weird? No, I don't. And whoever made that doesn't have a life and they're a hater. Well, I wouldn't say all that. But I, I would, would say they probably don't have a twin. Like they don't understand what it's like to they're probably the only child. Probably. Yeah. I feel like having a twin is fun. It is. Like, I literally went to your job. You went to my job. So she my had team a game. president. She had a game at her job. She works for um, a team at, in the NFL. I went to the game. I invited her to the suite, the I, family suite. Right. So I went up to the suites, and as I was going upstairs, I had to pass the front desk. Um, the front desk people, they were so nice. They were like, oh, Chanel, look at you in your regular clothes. You <laughs> That reminds me of that one TikTok. I know. <laughs> that one employee who liked to come to work with, with a regular clothes on. Just to see the reaction. Right. Okay, but it was like, oh, look at you. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm Sh Shonda, her sister. Chanel didn't tell us she had a twin. <laughs> Leroy, uh, sissy, come over here. Look at this. Who you think that is? That's Chanel. That's Chanel. She went upstairs. No, that's her twin. Uh, yeah, y'all. I'm Shonda. I'm not in the sports industry. Oh, why you not here? Why you don't work here? Like, it was a thing. <laughs> It was no, but tell them about Jason. But then I went up to the suites. I went up to the uh, family suites or whatever with the president of the team, which was really dope. Uh, he's really amazing, by the way, Jason Wright. And so he walked up to me and was like, hey, Chanel. And he said something about work. <laughs> he like, said, you're not working today? You're not, you're not working today? Or <laughs> something along those lines. I'm like, oh, I'm her twin sister. <laughs> Mind you, he didn't know you had a twin either. <laughs> so I'm just trying to figure out, like, what's really good? Like, are you not, like, how do you bring that up in regular conversation? Like, how, what? How, how are y'all we... heading to the meeting? By the way, I have a twin. Right. right. But how, I don't know. Let's ask them. Like, how should we bring up the fact that we're twins? Yeah. It was the funniest thing, though, was when we hosted that mixer at Ben's Next Door in D.C. That was. For Forbes the Culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was up there mixing and mingling because I was one of the hosts for the event. And then, Shonda, you walk upstairs and the whole room just, like, has this crazy reaction <laughs> because they thought I went and, like, changed clothes or they just realized I had a twin in that moment. Right. It was so funny. But look, so the person who you, she was throwing the event with, Angel, she was like, first of all, that's so rude to not tell people that you have a twin <laughs> because how are we going to go throughout? Like, what if in the real world I walk up on your twin and I say hi and that's not you? That's why Angel And that said. happens in real life. Yeah. yeah. So I feel as though maybe we should, like, have a disclaimer when we meet people, get to know people. Like, hey, Should it be way, in our bio, our social media I bios? have a twin. Yes. I am not at Page of Dr. Turner. Yeah. It's giving twinning. I don't know. It's something cute. Twin. <laughs> One half of the twin. I don't one know. Half, I think that was in my bio. One half of double dose. Okay. So we'll maybe see. we got to start doing that. Yeah. Because a the people are getting confused. They are. It happens a lot. It does. I remember walking in D.C. when I like first moved out here. And mind y'all, Chanel's been in D.C. longer than I have, but yeah. her name like rings bells in D.C. Yeah. 
Yeah. It does. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It's not, it's not deniable. Go ahead. Um, so, I mean, that's, it's natural because she works for, like, the, the D.C. football team. And well, so, yeah. Yeah. And so, when I was walking outside, I was walking with, like, friends or whatever, going out to eat. I just hear it screaming from, like, the <laughs> other side of the street. Oh, my gosh, Chanel, Chanel. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm too far away to explain to them that I'm her twin. <laughs> But I'm not close enough, but I'm close enough to say hi. So I'm going to just be like, hey, y'all. Hey. So I just said hi. It was a bunch of them? Yeah. Okay. It was like, oh, my God, you look so cute. Thank you. <laughs> Mind y'all, Chanel had blonde braids at the time, and I had regular box, <laughs> box braids. So I'm trying to figure out, like, how do they think that this is Chanel? I get it. We look alike. But, Yeah. It's interesting. That's it's funny. interesting. But now that you've been here for... Yo, Prime members, so check this out. We are here to talk about our favorite thing in the world, and that is Amazon Prime. That's right. We all have different interests, but there's one thing that brings us together. Prime. As members ourselves, we found ways to maximize our Prime benefits to get the most out of our passions. From fast and free shipping, streaming of movies and music, and even exclusive deals and discounts, Prime has it all. And what's great is that you can use all of these services to elevate your hobbies and interests. Whether you're a bookworm, a fitness fanatic, or a gaming guru, Prime has something for everyone. I promise you that. So go ahead, explore and indulge in all that Prime has to offer. We promise you won't be disappointed. Time to get more out of whatever you're into, Prime. And that's that on that. For about a good year now, mm -hmm. when I go out, people approach me and they'll say really? like, oh, I follow you on Instagram. You're Dr. Shonda, right? And I'll be like, no, I'm not <laughs> Dr. Shonda. I'm her twin sister. That's funny. <laughs> but you know, I'm realizing that a lot of my followers don't know that I have a twin. Mine either. either. Like, a lot of my LinkedIn folks that I'm connected with. That's another situation. <laughs> LinkedIn. That LinkedIn, bro, that would get you in trouble. But LinkedIn. <laughs> I got a story about LinkedIn. I was with one of my friends who um, is also in the mental health industry. And apparently, I guess they follow you on LinkedIn. And I'm most active. Out of all my social media, I'm most active on LinkedIn. Yeah. So that's, and that's one of the reasons why your name rings bells in the, these business streets. Right? <laughs> and so my friend was like, yo, I was following your sister and I didn't know you had a sister. I'm like, <laughs> Oh my gosh, how is Dr. Shonda like a psychologist and doing all these things with the brand and, you know, working on, she's in the sports industry too. Like, <laughs> I'm not doing enough. I need to get some things together in my life. And I told him like, no, I have a twin who's in sports. <laughs> and this whole time he thought that we were one person that is just funny. doing a whole bunch of different jobs. <laughs> That's that weird. is hilarious. That's weird. That is kind of weird. Okay, I kind of understand the TikTok right now. <laughs> Have you ever been in a situation where you couldn't tell us apart? Like, if you were, like, looking at a picture or... Um, I've had moments where I had to, like, usually no, but I've had moments where I had to, like, just look twice and be like, oh, that's me. Yeah. I feel like in our younger pictures, I can't tell us apart. Like, baby pictures? Not, not even just baby, but, like, also toddlers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, I can't tell us apart. Well, I can tell us apart, but it takes, like, a little while. Like, T and Tamara. Yeah. I think that's the best way to, like, describe how we look alike, but you can also tell that we're different. But some people can't tell T and Tamara apart, which I think is I feel like, yeah. I feel like you could tell T and Tamara apart. Yeah. But, um, I re so I asked you that question because I remember being at a store. And this happens, this happened more than once. Oh, to both of us. yes. Oh, we my God. We were at a store. Yes. Uh, it was definitely giving a Tia Tamara moment, y'all. Like, it it's it so was giving great. goosebumps, weird, right. freaky moment. But look, okay. but also Tia and Tamara. So we were in the store, and granted, we were we like we're walking past each other and like looking. At one point, I thought I was looking in a mirror. I like, did. I too. thought it was a mirror. I thought it was a in mirror. the in the store, like <laughs> separating the store, until like I double took and. I was like, wow, that's not me. That's, <laughs> that's my, my sister twin over there. And for a split second, I understood what everybody else yeah. was saying when they say, like, oh, I can't tell y'all apart. Yeah. For a split second. Yeah. That I happened agree. to you, That too. happened to me, too. That same exact way. It was like a random store, like a Sears or something. Something. Or Ames. Remember Ames? Girl. <laughs> In Delaware. So, oh, yeah. Not Ames. <laughs> Ames has been closed down for about 30 years. Ames had the stuff. Oh. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're going to hop straight into the stuff. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot to, again, welcome to the Page and Dr. Shonda podcast welcome. listeners. Welcome. It has I now feel been honored to be here for your one-year episode, yeah. your celebration. Yes. Is this a celebration? 
It's a celebration. Okay, I'm she honored. Yeah, yeah. So she's here for the one year. Welcome. Hey, bars. <laughs> She's here for the one year. And so we're going to be d digging deep into some hot topics today. And I also have some things that I wanted to kind of share with my sister from a psychology perspective. Even though she's not in the mental health field, I kind of wanted to pick her brain about it because yeah. I feel like it's something that we can all relate to. Yeah. But before we get into the topic, make sure that you guys are subscribed to the podcast. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you are listening to the audio version, make sure you go on to Apple, Spotify, and everywhere else you're listening in order to subscribe or follow. If you are watching the video version, I need you to go into YouTube and make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel. By doing this, you'll be able to be updated each and every time I upload an episode. If you have not done so already, I need you to text PODCAST to 21000. That's PODCAST to 21000. That way, again, you will be subscribed to my text message community. I literally just received a few text messages from you guys a few moments ago asking questions that you want me to answer on today's episode, and I will be doing that. So, um, yeah, so make sure that you're signed up. Love it. Period. All right, so we're going to hop straight into some things. So we're going to go into the hot off the press segment. So okay. this is our segment where we talk about mental health in the news, right? We Fine. talk about mental health in pop culture. Somebody, the thing about TikTok, I love it. Yeah. But because you're more authentic and you show up as yourself, you also get a lot more like trolls, like people who come at you or whatever. Mm -hmm. So somebody came to me the other day and was like, yo, everything is not a case study. It, it is. is. It is. <laughs> when you're a psychologist and this is what you do for a living, everything is like psychology. Yeah. And so that's what we talk about on um, Hot Off the Press. We take things in pop culture, we kind of talk about it from a mental health or a psychological perspective. Yeah, and you, everything's not a case. You literally live this. I live it. I don't think people understand that. When you were in school, we used to talk about you because you used to diagnose everything and we hated it. <laughs> that's yeah. Not good. The family, yeah. No, the family did that. <laughs> and remember, you had, you did some sort of project on our cousin. Like, you kept her for the whole day. You oh, fed yeah. her lunch. Yeah, Rochelle. Shout yeah. out to Rochelle. Shout out to Rochelle. Rochelle. <laughs> um, what was that? Yeah, so, I so when you're in school to be a psychologist, you have to practice administering IQ tests or cognitive assessments, uh -huh. which is a two-hour test, uh -huh. right? So it's two hours every time you sit down with that person. So you kept her for two hours or yeah. longer? Pro it was probably a little longer because here's the thing. You have to, like, you practically, you have to do it um, on grounds before you can go out to internships and do it on actual clients. Okay. Right? So you have to start by doing it on your um, peers. So I did it with my classmates at school. Mm -hmm. And then you progress to doing it to like three people in the community. So I did one on um, somebody randomly who agreed to it and another one on Rochelle. Okay. Yeah. So Rochelle, and she did great. Um, and then after that, I progressed into like doing it onto other people. I also did one on dad. Really? Doing one, yo, doing, no, yo, I didn't, how was that? I, it was, I was, was so like, yes, <laughs> I can't even describe how Why? I was feeling. Dad does not follow directions. No, like, he doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> he's going to do things his own way. <laughs> he's going to do things his own way. And so like, <laughs> when he, and I, I did a war shot on dad, what is which that? is the ink block test. Yeah. Okay. So I showed dad some ink blots and I, you know, he's going into like, well, this is the prophetic uh, angel. <laughs> like, yeah, just answer the question like a normal person. <laughs> like, you don't have to be this way. <laughs> and so, um, and I was talking to my teacher. I was like, listen, I don't know how to interpret this. <laughs> I don't know how to interpret this. And she was like, well, it looks like your dad was, um, you're supposed to like, Go through the test, ask what might this be, right? Mm -hmm. Give you a simple answer, and then you gotta you have to re ask those questions, and they describe what everything that um, everything that it is. So okay. you go through it once, and then you go through it again, and they describe everything. Uh -huh. Dad went through it and described everything in detail. <laughs> all in one so I'm like, I don't know what to do with this information because he just gave me everything in the first That's try. So and she was like, Well, it looks like he gave you everything in the first try, so it seems like he kind of cut the time down for you. But in the moment, I'm like. <laughs> this is psychosis. I don't know what this is. <laughs> shout out uh, to dad. Shout out to my dad. Uh, we gotta get hey, him on, right. <laughs> we gotta get them on an episode. But yeah, that was that. Um, so we're gonna go into hot off the press. Hot off the press. So today I want to start by talking about. There have been so many things happening in the media. So much. Um, have you got an opportunity to cover it yet? Not yet. Mm -mm. But the first one I want to talk about is Shanquilla Robinson. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So rest in peace to that uh, beautiful, beautiful queen. queen. Uh, she was a 25-year-old Charlotte woman who mysteriously died while on vacation. So that's what the article says, but we know by now, like, she was murdered. She was she killed. She was murdered. Allegedly. Um, 
Yeah, so, yeah. you know, they were not tried yet, but we know that after being involved in a fight, she accrued damages to her, the spinal, spinal cord, cord and yeah. her neck and things of that nature, and eventually she, she succumbed to her injuries. But she was on vacation with a group of people in Mexico. Um, officials have an, issued an arrest warrant for one of the people on the trip, so they finally made that decision. But before... It came to light that she succumbed to her injuries. Yeah. The first report was that she died of alcohol poisoning. Yes, that's what the friends told her. That's what the friends told the world, yeah. yeah. And it was posted on Shade Room, and just people started reacting like, hmm, this doesn't sound right, this right. doesn't sound right. And one of her friends retweeted and said, I've drunk with her so many times, it's no way she has alcohol poisoning. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until, like, Twitter's reaction that they started to investi investigate into the case. Right. Let me correct that. It, not correct it, but add to it. It wasn't just Twitter. They said it was black Twitter. Black so Twitter. Black content creators are yep. the reason why the story of Shaquilla Robinson came back to the forefront yep. to the point where the FBI is becoming involved in you know, their involvement is but warranted. But black Twitter, black content creators has been responsible for bringing a lot of un injustices to light Absolutely. in these past, I would say, five to ten years. Yeah. So, shout out to black Twitter. For real. For real. Because if it wasn't for that, I don't think that this case would have gotten the recognition that it needed. It wouldn't have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but... Going back to Shanquilla, so unfortunately, like, this was a young lady. She was going to a, a trip to Mexico with a few friends for a friend's yeah. birthday party with a group of people, I guess, who she thought she knew. It sounded like something that we would we be doing. doing. Yes. Yeah, we've, we've done that. We've, we've done taken that. trips to Mexico and DR with friends. Some of them we knew. Some, Some of them, them were we friends of friends. Right. And so that's what makes the story of Shanquilla Robinson so heartbreaking because it, it was, was like, so relatable. I saw myself in her. Yeah. And I even was having the conversation with um, with my sister on the way up here. Like, I can see myself being in a situation where I'm with people who I don't know 100% have my best interest in mind. Yeah. Because sometimes, like, I'm my sister knows, like, I'm a loner. If somebody invite me somewhere or, you know, to, like, let's go out the country. Let's go to this city. Let's go to that city. If I have the time or whatever, I'm going to go. Right. And I don't always keep people up to date with, like, where my whereabouts are right. and where I'm going. And even though I should, I'm not saying that's okay. Even though you should, yeah. I should, 100%. And that's something I communicated to you. Like, I got to be more responsible with communicating that. Because I ask you. Yeah. And it's good to have people who, who care about that, especially right. when you're traveling abroad. But all in all, I think this, this story is so heartbreaking because not only did she suffer uh, from injuries of being, like, beaten the way she did. Yeah. But it was the way her friends, quote, unquote, tried to cover it up. Right. And she, I just wanted to get you per, your perspective. Like, what were your thoughts on that when you heard, like, she was going through such a hard time, became, I believe she was unconscious, mm -hmm. and her friends, again, just continued to try to cover it up. It's so unfortunate, and the part that really gets me is that they left her body in another country. Like, they didn't even have the decency to wait around until her body was released. They went back and tried to start living their, their merry lives, and her body was still in Mexico. Like, that's the part that got me. How can you be so heartless? Yeah. And just to know that she was down there, she was with people, but she was ultimately by herself. Yeah. She was the only one that was there for Shanquilla. Like, nobody was fighting for her. Nobody was defending her in that moment. They were recording her while she was getting beat like an animal. Mm -hmm. So it was very unfortunate. It was yeah. so sad. And it was also the fact that they said once the, um, they called for, for assistance, um, mm -hmm. and they stated again that she had alcohol poisoning. But when the person got there, the medical person got there, um, they tried to treat her. The, treat the treatment didn't work at that time. Mm. Um, and then she did, the person tried to get her to go to a hospital or tried to get her transported to, like, an actual me medical center. But her friends were like, no, just treat her here. Mm. I really, I don't know if that would have, like, changed the outcome of her injuries or, yeah. um, like, you know, her, her death, if that would have rewritten the story in any way. But it's the simple fact that, again, like, you are around people who have their best interests in mind right. over your livelihood. Right. Over your life. Right. Right? And so... It's literally like that scripture says, like, life is like a vapor of smoke. It's here one day. Seriously. And going the next. And it's like you really have to be mindful of the people who you're around. Yes. Um, be aware of your surroundings. Yes. But in, even thinking from a psychological standpoint, like, I, have, I don't know any of her friends personally. I have not psychologically assessed them. But I will say the behaviors that we saw exhibited and the lack of remorse and trying to cover it up, mm -hmm. that's antisocial personality traits right there. It was even to the point where I saw a recent story where her mom said that they were all in the house planning on what they were going to wear to the funeral, the friends. 
Are you serious? The friends was in the house planning on what colors they was going to wear to the funeral. This stuff. was prior to, like, when, before the right. news got out. Right. And that, that, that's not normal. Like, right. that's, like, to have such, a, like, a, a callous outlook on this, like, it, that's not, humans have empathy. Human beings have emotions. Humans experience guilt. If you're able to override that to the point where you can sit up in somebody's house who you know and you know how they got killed or mm-hmm. how their murderer and you know that information, you keep that to yourself. That's that's, that's not normal. Yeah, that aligns with that like personality trait. Yeah. So it's so sad. It's so unfortunate. And we definitely keep in the family of Shankula yes, Robinson in our prayers. prayers. Absolutely. We were also going to talk about, um, well, let's save that for the next episode. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. We were going to talk a little bit about some things happening in the sports industry. Mm-hmm. We're going to save that for um, the Double Dose podcast. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to transition a bit. So we're going to talk today about some things related to attachment. So when we talk about attachment, we're talking about relationships and how relationships are developed. Mm. Right. And so specifically what I want to talk about is the theory that one's parental relationship, specifically the one with their father, their father, that Mm. impacts how they see God. Wow. How they they, their image of God. Wow. How they view God, their relationship with God. Wow. Yeah. So this is actually something that was brought to light um, years ago by one of the founding fathers of psychology who, you know, I have a racist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I, I, I uh, have but different okay. perspectives about eat the meat and leave the bone. Okay, period. But good. yeah, one of the things that he has stated was he talked about how one, um, like the one's image of their parental figure, their specifically, namely their father, hmm. how that can impact how they see God. That also aligns with the attachment theory, right? So in attachment theory, we basically have something that's called our internal working model. And this is a psychological theory? Yeah. Okay. So an internal working model of relationships. So basically that means that the relationship that I developed with my parents in childhood, Mm -hmm. whether it's mom or dad or whatever, that serves as a blueprint or a working model for how I show up in relationships with other people, Hmm. with relationships with a a spouse, relationships with with friends. And that can also reflect how I show up in my relationship with God. Yes. So if my blueprint with my parents is marked by uh, having parents who are overly punitive, Mm. having parents who are inconsistent, having parents who are invalidating, that is going to distort how I see God. That is going to distort how I see him and and how I I think he'll show up for me. Mm Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I just thought that was interesting that and I is. wanted to bring that up to the audience because I've been thinking for a minute, like, have we had these conversations before? I don't think so. I don't think the world has had this conversation yet. And it's so interesting because, like, you can see the correlation between um, you and that, that higher figure, that authoritative yeah. figure, and then how you're perceiving your relationship with God or right. how you're perceiving God. Um, because now I'm asking, like, okay, well, what about individuals who experience abuse with their parents? Like, mm. how, do they, how do they view God, right? Do they see God as this ultimate punisher, in which he's not? God is loving, God is faithful, God is kind. Yeah. Um, or do they see God as this, like, this ultimate enforcer or yeah. this authoritative figure that's big and scary because you had that relationship with your parents? Right. Now my mind is wondering, like, okay, how did the two correlate? Yeah. And ultimately, yeah, that's what the theory is saying. Wow. It's saying that, like, let's say somebody did grow up in an abusive household and they did have parents who were, like, physically abusive or, or neglecting or what have you. Mm-hmm. They're going to show up in a relationship with God believing that, you know, things that they do is going to cause punishment to befall on them, mm. right? The relationship with God becomes very transactional. Yeah. Because that's what happens in unhealthy parental relationships. Jeez. Instead of coming from a healthy, if, you're, if your relationship with especially your father is not coming from a place of like un- unconditional love and empathy and stuff, mm-hmm. you're going to go approach that relationship with God as, it's a, as if it's a transaction. Yeah. So and I defensive. have to, defensive. Yep. And I, I have to measure up to these, cert- to these certain qualities and these certain characteristics in order for God to bless me. That's crazy. I have to do X, Y, and Z in order for me to experience God. Um, like, like, it, it, or because I did X, Y, and Z, I can't why, expect God's love, or right. that's why I'm experiencing this, or getting this type of punishment, or exactly. I can expect this type of punishment. Wow. Yeah. And that makes me even wonder, Chanel, like, is that one of the reasons why some people might be hesitant to even coming to the church or hesitant to um, restoring a relationship with God? Mm. 
believing that their relationship with God is transactional because they may have had a transactional relationship with parents. Wow, that's so interesting. And that's such a distorted view of who God truly is, right? right? That's a demonic view of who God is. God is not this big, scary giant. That's this big, authoritative enforcer. Right. Wow. I think people forget about the loving qualities of God, the grace do. that God bestows on us. Yeah, I, and especially if you grew up in an atmosphere like that, it yeah. would be hard to receive love and right. receive the fact that you deserve grace. Because think about it. Like, or you have grace. Because That's if so you're in a household where, you know, your parents only tell you that they love you if you get good grades. Right. Or they only say, you know, good job, or I see you, and I know what you're doing when you get this uh, championship, or you make the basketball team, you make the cheerleading team. That's right. the only time that you get that love that you're looking for. That's going to reinforce the idea and the behavioral expectation that I have to constantly perform mm -hmm. in order to get the things, that, in order to receive blessing. In order to receive blessing, and even basic necessities. Right. In order to receive the basic things that yeah. you need. In order to be taken care of. Right. And in order for God to see me as his son, I have to do things. I, it has, it's a performative relationship. And a that's performative and transactional a direct relationship. contradiction of the Bible. Exactly. And so I think having these types of conversations and even asking ourselves, wow, what is my blueprint? What is my, the blueprint that I have developed relating to my parents' uh, our relationship that we develop and how can this be impacting my relationship with God right am I showing up to God as if he is he has these uh qualities not as the father but my father yeah right I, I my father was amazing he was a great man of, he is a great man of God yeah still is and also dad is human mm -hmm. right so it's not fair for me to try to to for me to uh apply Humanly um, mortal characteristics to, to an a big ultimate God. superior God. Yes. To an omnipresent God, to an omniscient God. Yeah. Applying these qualities to an, uh, the, uh, a superior, a, a deity. It doesn't measure up. Can't embody, like, right. Yeah. So the two I, can't even go in the same sentence. It's but, just, it's not measurable. Because that's, and for real, for real, like, I think, I think we, I think everybody could have fell victim to this. Oh like, yeah, even absolutely. if we have good qualities related to our parents, yeah. like attributing that to God, I'm just thinking in my mind, like that's still inaccurate, right? Because those are more mortal qualities, right? And we serve a big God. We, yes, we serve an immortal God, right? We serve a God who is supernatural, right? So applying these mortal characteristics to a supernatural God, that's I'm constantly going to be putting God in a box, right? And that's not fair to God. The moment exactly. I'm able to box God in, mm -hmm. that's the moment where he's no longer God. Exactly. The moment I'm able to figure him out, that's the moment where he's no longer supernatural. That's big. Like, it's, it's literally, <laughs> you lost your earring. I did. I don't know where the back is. We'll keep going. <laughs> that's fine. But, you know, I think that when it comes to the way we were reared, the way we were developed, and the relationships that we had with our parents, mm -hmm. it really is going to take for everybody, whether you came from an abusive household and even having this conversation, because originally I was thinking like, oh, this is uh, consistent with people who grew up in those types of homes. But mm -hmm. even if you grew up in a good home, you had an amazing father, still applying those characteristics to God is still inconsistent with who God is. Exactly. So I think, you know, and we have to do some deconstructing of that. Yeah, and then... The, the way that we were raised or the way that we had these parent interactions, it affects all of our relationships. So yeah. not just the way that we view God, but mm -hmm. it affects the way that we uh, interact with other humans. It right. affects the way that we show up on our jobs, the way that we show up as sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, cousins. Um, so yeah, I think that that theory is transferable to other relationships too. Exactly, so. exactly. So those are our thoughts, y'all. Thank you for tuning in. Yes. So, very last segment, I want to, firstly, I hope that y'all continue to reflect on that because we said a lot, um, dropped a lot of gems. Take notes, right? Take notes and let me know what you think about it. Um, but our next segment is Ask Dr. Shonda. So this is where you guys are sending in your questions and you're asking me things that you need help with. Someone had submitted a question in the text message portal and they had said- Can um, I read the question? So is the question I, on here? I didn't write I it see word it. for okay. word. But do you want to... We talked about it. Um, 
No. I don't I don't understand. That's okay. That. <laughs> so basically the person was saying how they're trying to fast, but also they recognize how like fasting can make them irritable because they're not eating and they want to learn ways to better control their emotions. Hangry. Yeah, they said hangry. They wow. get hangry. Therefore, they um, want to learn how to better control your emotions. Okay, so the question is, how do you control your emotions while you're fasting? Right. Okay. What would you say? So my immediate thought to this, I don't know if I have a specific answer to that, but what I will say to this person is that fasting is designed to help you control your emotions. Mm -hmm. Fasting literally kills the flesh and your fleshly desires. So it is designed to kill those things that are, are, are not like God. Angry, being angry might... Uh, kind of, it, it might fall into that category. So mm -hmm. I would say that um, when you fast, be open minded to the idea that maybe God wants to build up a different discipline in you, so that you don't get hangry when you fast, right. or so that you don't experience X Y Z emotion. Um, yeah, that's what I would say. Exactly, I would agree with that. Um, and also, you know, keeping in mind that first of all. Being angry is not necessarily it's not a, a sin. Right. It's just how we're manifesting it. So how you if react I'm, to that. Exactly. So if I'm angry and I'm taking it out on my coworker or I'm taking it out on my children or my parents or whatever, that's when we, we need to get it under control. Exactly. And for that, we would go through scripture that specifically focuses on that thing that we are having trouble with. Mm -hmm. Because if we're fasting and we're not including the word in that, I always say that's just a glorified diet. It is. Like that's you you just die. The world fasts. Right. So we got to make sure that we're incorporating God's holy scripture. Right. Um, and knowing that the scripture can um, help to change. So, so yeah. So review scriptures related to emotions, controlling our emotions. One of my favorites is Philippians 4 and 7. So make sure that you are. Love that. Yes. Yeah, so make sure that you're writing those scriptures down and reviewing them. So that is all for today, y'all. It's been real. It's Again, been real. happy one year anniversary to me. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to continue to celebrate for the rest of the month. And yeah, make sure that you tune in next week. And don't forget, you have the power to create the emotions that you want to experience. Love it. God bless. See ya. Take your business further with the American Express Business Gold Card. Now smarter and more flexible. It's packed with enhanced benefits that are built for your business. All with the powerful backing of Amex. Terms apply. Learn more at americanexpress.com slash businessgoldcard.